Florida State versus Georgia Tech in Dublin, Ireland. 12 p.m. game on the East Coast. It's going to be pretty early for y'all at 11. And then you keep going left. The alarm's already been set, brother. I, I'm chilling. <laughs> the ghost is already in the fridge. I, <laughs> Let's talk about Haynes King for a second, man. Yes. I know you're very familiar Let's. with him, Kali. Yes, sir. Um, has looked pretty impressive when he's with Georgia I think we Tech. We all are very familiar with Haynes King. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, he had 35 total touchdowns last year. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to highlight that for the, for this guy, but I will. 35 total <laughs> touchdowns. He played really well in their bowl game against uh, UCF, which me and Sor were at. <laughs> Ching Ching at their bowl game, uh, the Gasparilli <laughs> Bowl. Um, but it was beautiful. He, he had 737 uh, yards on the ground. Jamal Haynes is going to be a bright spot for them again at running back. 1,059 yards. He actually led the Yellow Jackets with 10 rushing touchdowns last year as well. Uh, Brent Key has been a bright spot as coach for, for them as well former offensive lineman, but he's bringing a philosophy of passing, which I think you're going to see that a lot this year. Eric Singleton Jr. had 700 yards and he had six electric touchdowns last year. And like, just go, just go watch the highlights. The dude is really, really good, really fast, great route runner. Um, so I expect him to get closer to that 1K mark this year. I think what they're going to do is try to take a little bit of the pressure off of Haynes King from being such a uh, playmaker on the ground. And focus on what he can do with his arm. Um, Georgia Tech ranked <laughs> ranked towards the lowest in the league in pass defense. So they went in the transfer portal and they grabbed Romello Height from from USC <laughs> to to help on the edge. And also they grabbed Warren uh, Burrell from Tennessee. <laughs> this should help the pass defense, hopefully, as they are one of the worst in the country. Like I said. Florida State, as a fan of this team, uh, I didn't even write anything down for for this. I'm going to just go off the hip because of a fan of this team. (laughs) Uh, I I have to recognize that we lost a lot. Trey Benson, regardless if he wasn't a thousand yard rusher, it was still a force to be reckoned with. Jaheim Bell at tight end. Keon Coleman. uh, Johnny Wilson. You know, and then we go on the other side of the ball. Jared Verse and, and Braden, Braden Fisk. Fisk, you know, our two corners went, went to the draft. Um, Tate and Bethune back there is our linebacker. He's gone. We lost a lot. And then before that, we had uh, our boy, uh, Jamie, Jamie, Rob- Jamie. <laughs> Jamie Robinson. Uh, Jamie. Uh, yeah, Jamie Robinson was back the famous, there. So. The famous tiptoe lurker. So pretty much we've been gutted. And what did we do? We proceeded to go in and grab Roydell Williams to replace Trey Benson from Alabama. We went and grabbed Marvin Jones Jr. as an edge rusher out of Georgia. Um, and now we're expecting a lot of our team to, to, to you know to step up to the plate this year. Transfer portal highlights. DJ Uyunglele, obviously, was one of my guys. Malik Benson, getting him as well. We still have Lawrence Toafili on this team, which I have no idea why I haven't made him the full-time starter, and it's driving me crazy. Give this man his looks. He's been loyal to this team. And by all accounts, if you watched him in the second half of our season, he was electric. There's not a lot that people you could have done when he got Dante an open to space. You can expect Dante to be in the Toafili jersey, Saturday. Yeah, I'll be in the Toafili jersey <laughs> full-time. Um, I, a couple guys that I did want to call out. Patrick Payton, who's been with us, is going to look good at edge. I can't wait to see what he does. Um uh, you know, Cam Riley, we got him from Auburn. Hope we see what he does at linebacker. DJ Lundy, who's been with us, has been, you know, really, really good as well. Ventral Cypress, hopefully he can step up to the plate and actually be a good corner to fill in. Um, and then one guy that I wanted to call out that, that came over from, from Oregon State and our defensive line was Sione Lo, Lolohia. <laughs> Always have a problem pronouncing his name. He's been killing it in camp. From all accounts from what I hear, strong guy, and he has a very strong bond with DJ Uyongalele, and they came over together. I think they grew up together as well. So they're making this very, very personal that they're on this squad. Do I think that this is going to be a blowout by any means in this game? Absolutely not. That's why I remember him. I think this will be the better game 
that had happened in the last two years in Dublin. Uh, Notre Dame came and put the smack DZ on, on Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty work. I think this is going to be a low scoring game. I think it's going to be underwhelming. Yeah. And I think the the bright spots are going to be bright and the low spots are going to be low. I think these this is that classic boxing match of two ranked boxers that are trying to get to a championship match and it's just a stinker of a fight before they get there and they don't have a lot of expectations for the rest of the of their career based off of this one thing. And I, I think that's how we're going to see Florida State and Georgia Tech. I think that this game is going to come down to like 21-14. With a couple of missed field goals on both sides of the ball. Like, I, I think it's going to be nasty work. Um, still, Florida State's winning this one. Um, but I think Georgia Tech's going to be a pretty good squad under Brinkie. Yeah. I think I think he's got I think he's got a really good recruiting class coming in. Then they get an offensive lineman who was a five star and that was like their first five star of all time at Georgia yes, Tech. Got yes. Yep. So. Yeah. Things are looking up, man. He's an offensive what, what line guy. So. He, what was he talking about at the uh, Casper Bowl? He was like, all of our grades have gone up tremendous. We're all A's and B's now or something along the lines. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, like, I was like, my brother, you just won the Casper Bowl. Why are we talking about grades? It don't matter. They, I mean, I hey, get it, but like, brother. <laughs> he was happy. Don has got Florida State winning. Hayden has got Florida State winning. And Kali, who do you have winning this game? Good stuff. <laughs> This is going to be a close game. I cannot stress that enough. I think that this game could come down to the wire. Um, I'm going to talk about Georgia Tech first. Uh, First things first, right? Let's remember that this Georgia Tech team is competitive with everyone they play. They beat two ranked teams last year in North Carolina and Miami. I know that, that Miami game really was more beautiful. on Mario Cristobal than it on was Georgia beautiful. Tech. But yes, I I greatly enjoyed it too. But I mean, it showed that this team has has grit and can be really competitive under Brent Key. And they mm-hmm. only lost to Georgia by eight points to close their regular season, right? Like they keep it competitive, and I think especially against the Florida State team that has to replace a lot. I think that if there is a trap game for Florida State, right? I think there's quite a handful of games that they could lose this year, but this one I view more as a trap game because they are favored. They should be favored, but I still think there's a really good chance that they lose. Um, I think that Eric Singleton, you know, Georgia Tech's uh, star wide receiver who's going into his true sophomore year, uh, I think he's going to give this secondary a run for their money. I think he might have like a 60-yard catch on us at the beginning of the game, and we're going to be like, what the hell? I mean, He's electric, man. Yeah, he, he's incredible. I, th- I think he tops 100 yards, maybe even by halftime. I mean, he's very talented. Um, he brought in 700 yards and six touchdowns last year as a true freshman. Um, and Haynes King, of course, he he fixed up his mechanics. That was one of his biggest knocks coming out of high school in the A&M was exactly. he taught himself yeah. how to throw the football. And his dad said, man, if it like if it works, I'm not fixing it. Right. And. He had this goofy windup and like and and it it looked it, it was terrible like for him and <laughs> after transferring from A and M to Georgia Tech right you know Max Johnson was was at A and M in Haynes last year here as well and you know Max Johnson's dad Brad Johnson was an NFL quarterback. And so Brad Johnson got Haynes connected to a quarterback coach who has helped him fix up his mechanics. Uh, while at Georgia Tech. And so his throwing motion, again, it it can be a little wonky still at times, but it's definitely cleaned up a lot and is much more efficient. And, you know, it's shown in better play. And he's also found a place where he can he can thrive alongside uh, Chris Lane, who is another another guy who went over from College Station to Atlanta. So like this, this Georgia Tech team, watch out for them. They can play spoiler in the ACC. I think they'll be a really competitive team. Um, and you know, now going to the Florida State side, right? No Trey Benson, no Jordan Travis, no Keon Coleman. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. At least not yet, right? Like going into the season holistically, I think that Florida State will be a very good team. But I think this game in particular against a scrappy and gritty Georgia Tech team. It's going to be tough 
I think it's going to be pretty tough off the get-go for them as they try to gel together. Like you mentioned, Dante, all those new players, whether I mean, most of them are transfers, right? It yep. takes time to gel and not just like the off season, but it takes like it takes real game reps to to gel, know how the other players like operate and all that other stuff. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period. And I will say the running game of Florida State, whether it is Lawrence Tofili or Roy Dell Williams and even DJ Uyunglele, who provides an ample threat with his legs. They're going to be able to, I think, move the ball against this Georgia Tech team who returns only five starters on defense and allowed over 200 yards per game on the ground last year. So that's Georgia Tech's weakness is the running game. And I don't think we'll see gr a great game from DJU throwing the ball, but I think that Florida State will get it done on the ground. And because of that, I, I think Florida State's going to edge this one out. I mean – as someone who just loves to see upsets every once in a while, I think Georgia Tech, you know, it would be cool if Georgia Tech won this game. But, again, I think it will be close. But Florida State's running game is going to prove to be just too much for Georgia Tech. And the Seminoles are going to get the win. Yeah, man. I, I love that analysis because the X factor has to be DJ Uyangalale in this game. Like, he has to mm -hmm. just show out. He's got to show up for the rest of the year for any of us to to think that Florida State is going to be a convincing team. Yeah. Um, and this is no slight against Mike Norvell. I think he's going to be an awesome coach. But, again, I'm keeping the same energy like I did with Colorado. All those transfers have got to mesh well together. <laughs> and I don't think that this is the year that they're going to do it. I know Marvin Jones Jr. gets a lot of hype, but, like, he was still a glorified backup for Georgia. So what are we doing yeah. here, sir? And <laughs> it's and just like also, when we got Jermaine Johnson. And and let's also remember that you know Uyangale is not unfamiliar with these ACC opponents, right? He played at Clemson. He did also play Georgia Tech once in his career. He knows um, how Dabo it was, works. It was also the first game of the season for them. It was also a 41 to 10 win for Clemson, right? So again, that that doesn't necessarily mean too much, but it's like it's not like this is a completely unfamiliar you know environment other than the fact that the game's in Dublin. So you know he's he's not in completely new territory. so yeah. give him a little bit of familiarity there, which can help. Yep. <sighs> oh. Cleese got them winning FSU. Sora, are you following the train? I know it's much, how much this hurts your heart. But can you do you have I you? fully <laughs> do believe that Georgia Tech can win this game. I do have FSU winning it though 24 to 21. Um mm -hmm. just to go ahead and get that out there. I think pretty much again exactly kind of what you said it takes time for these transfers to mesh over. It's it's not the NFL like what's what we look at for the you know the 20 22 season with the Eagles with all those transfers and all those additions in the draft where it was kind of like they that's their job they're professionals they will it, it's going to mesh a lot quicker in the NFL because that's your job these are still you know college kids who are having to worry about college and all that stuff and just their education and stuff on top of that learning new stuff all of that so there's other stuff outside of football that they have to worry about. So it's going to take longer for them to mesh. And I think you're going to see that in this first game. I think it's going to honestly depend on the running backs for Florida State and Roydell Williams and Lawrence Del Philly, however you have them going. If you have it 50-50 snap or whatever, however, you know, you're going to package both of those running backs. I think X factor wise for DJU is going to have to be his... I think he's going to have to run a lot because like with what Khalees said, they had, what, like the fifth worst run defense mm -hmm. and then they allowed like 200 yards per game rushing. So that's... If Georgia Tech can't control the run, that's going to ultimately be their downfall. Um, I don't think DJU is going to look great in the passing game, especially with Malik Benson. You've only had the off season to kind of train with it, so it's, it's still going to take time to see that. Uh, DJU, even in training camp himself, has had up and downs. Dude's kind of just been up and downs. I think he's going to have to rely on his legs a lot to win this game. And then also with Roy Dell Williams and Lawrence Toa Philly in the run game here. Um, for 
and then uh, actually let me continue on real quick with their defense um you good it, it's gonna have to be the defensive line because georgia tech's o-line well it's not the best their coach you know that's what he played so that's kind of the position that he knows most so the o-line won't be that bad for georgia tech but fsu is going to have to win on the defensive line because both of these secondaries are not the best it's it's going to have to be of if florida state can establish for florida state to win this they have to establish the run game with both of their running backs and with dju because i don't think he's going to pass well in this game Mm -hmm. all three of those guys are going to have to be on their a game for the run game and then it's also just going to have to depend on if florida state can beat georgia tech's offensive line because like we mentioned you cannot give haynes king and eric singleton time to connect because it could just as very very well easily, like Dante said, be a 60-yard bomb like with seconds counting down to halftime. And all of a sudden, it's a big momentum change after that. Or let's, let's be honest. Let's not be naive to think that Haynes King couldn't run run it for about 30 or 40 yards just out of nowhere, yeah, and miss yeah. it, making one guy miss. And then everybody's like, how did that happen? Well, Haynes King is more athletic than what people give him credit for. So, yeah. And, and he, Haynes with, King was also a, uh, what's his face? Haynes King was also a thousand yard rusher, I believe. Was he not? He was 700. Or, so, okay, 700. Eh, close. Um, okay, Jamal, I, I was drawing a blank on the running back. And then, you Jamal know, we got to look at Jamal Haynes, who was. Georgia Tech's first thousand yard rusher in six years, and he made he made the switch from wide receiver to running back. So you got to worry about him as well in the passing game. Yep. Um. So you got to worry about Eric Singleton. You got to worry about Jamal Haynes. You got to worry about um Haynes King. Those those guys. It, for if you're Florida State, your defensive line has to disrupt those three. You have to get to the quarterback fast, and you have to be able to stuff the run game. Um. And as for Brent Key, I mean, this isn't a you know, obviously, he's never played in Dublin, but ranked opponents, this isn't new for him. 2022, he was the interim head coach after just four games, went four and four, mm-hmm. uh, four and three in the conference. But let's look at 20, let's look at 2022 real quick. Notable wins over number 24, Pittsburgh, and number 13, North Carolina. Uh, this past year, seven and six in his first full year of head coach, went seven and six. Went to a bowl game, won said bowl game, the, Gar- the Gasparilla Bowl. We've been, you know, we yep. have talked about that. Notable wins, number 17, North Carolina, and number 17, Miami. So he's not, and, you know, like Khalees said as well, it was a one-possession game against Georgia, you know, Georgia, and they, he turned it into a one-possession game. So he's not, he's no stranger to facing ranked opponents. So, I mean, it... This is a very winnable game for Georgia Tech. It just, it, again, it's going to have to just be if Florida State, if Florida State's defensive line can pressure Haynes King and just make sure that no time between him and Eric Singleton can develop. And if they can contain Jamal Haynes, that's a step to win. And then all their two running backs and DJU have to be efficient in the run game. This could very well end up being a shootout and it's just going to depend on what secondary is going to make a play first. Right. I mean, it could, it could very well just be what, which of these cornerbacks or safeties is going to get a game changing interception. Well, we'll definitely see man, because that's definitely the biggest two question marks of of their defense for sure. Uh, Tony has Florida state winning and then, we got another uh, sweep here. Yes. Florida State. So take these to the bank. Take take the only one to the bank is the ECG one. Don't worry about yeah, what we I say. just, I, I still, <laughs> I don't know. This is obviously going to be the most exciting game. This is one, this is the one that we'll be live for. But man, this is, it's going to be a good game. It's, it's going to be interesting to see. I can't wait, man. I'm going to feel rush- really upset if we were wrong about this and Florida State just drops like, a 30 bomb on them and Georgia Tech gets like three points. I'm gonna be like, well, that was a letdown. Yeah, I, I'd be really mad. <laughs> and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the <laughs> bell notification so you're always notified. All right. Well, the 12th. 12- <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. At this point in life, bro, you, you just gotta just be you, you bro. Be you, just be you, bro. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,